Welcome to the Weekly Lead. I'm Pastor Becky Tirabasi, and every week I want to encourage you to be a leader in your sphere of influence. Will you join me for this week's message? In the Burning Heart 21 Day Adventure, the first seven days are spent talking about prayer. The next seven days, talk about purity. In the original 1947 Fellowship of the Burning Heart, the word for purity in their lives was holiness or chastity. (laughs) Sexual purity was another way to say chastity. Morality instead of sexual immorality. Of course, in 1947, the word holiness was not something that created fear or pushback. The church in the 1940s and 50s understood holiness to be special and set apart for the Lord. It was something you desired, something you wanted to be. Today, holiness is missing in the Christian culture in general, perhaps because the call to holiness is difficult to hear, difficult to live, and difficult to give. We see Titus or Paul speaking in Titus 2, saying these words, we're instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with self-control and right conduct and devotion to God while we look forward to the wonderful event when the Lord, our great God and Savior, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and make us his very own people, totally committed to doing what is right. Paul's saying, Titus, you must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone ignore you or disregard what you say. The seven days of purity in the Burning Heart 21 Day Adventure, and of course you can always take it. It's free at burningheartsinc.com, or of course you can get the paperback book on Amazon. But the, the actual 21 Day Adventure is an experience of spending one hour a day with God, talking to Him about the things that trip you up or push you back, and asking God to remove them. And so often, it isn't really other people in your way. It's perhaps your own bitterness, or your own unforgiveness, or your own unwillingness to get rid of something that hurts you and others, such as anger or addiction. You know, so often, we talk about the sexual purity and sobriety in the 21-day adventure for the 21st century Christian. When we overindulge, we're often self-medicating. And whether that's alcohol or drugs or vaping or smoking cigarettes, it's something of comfort we're looking for. Yet during the 21-day adventure, the second week on purity is really about the holiness of God coming into you. It's the Holy Spirit himself having an indwelling presence within you to guide you. And the the Holy Spirit in Greek, it, his meaning is comforter, advocate. And every time we self-medicate with either food or drink or, or a, a substance. We are pushing away the opportunity for the Holy Spirit of the living God to fill us, comfort us, speak to us, give us a renewal, a, a clean sweep, an abundant life. God's Holy Spirit is the guarantee that he will give us everything he promised us. He is, a, a, the Holy Spirit communicates with us when he lives inside of us. I remember the day, the day I became a Christian, I felt completely different than the hour or the day before when I wasn't a Christian 
because of the simple invitation for the Holy Spirit to come into my life and fill me. J. Oswald Sanders says, you're as full of the Holy Spirit as you want to be. I know this principle to be true in my life. I immediately, upon inviting the Holy Spirit to come into my life, noticed that I began to think different. I began to desire different things. I didn't know, I no longer desired the approval of people. Suddenly, I, appro- I desired the approval of God. I no longer was thirsty and anxious for a drink. In fact, prior to asking the Holy Spirit to come into my life, confessing my sins in front of another person, I I would have these incessant thoughts. You've got to have a drink. You've got to have a drink. You've got to have a drink. Well, they would drive me <laughs> literally to a place where I could get a drink or to a cupboard where I would pull out a drink or where I had been hiding bottles of alcohol. It was a driving force speaking into my life. When I invited the Holy Spirit into my life, my heart, my thoughts, my being, it was as if a wall came up to protect me from those thoughts. It was like a shield of faith. I was delivered immediately from obsessive, depressive, oppressive thoughts. I can't explain it except to say everyone who knew me the hour before I became a Christian knew the hour after I became a Christian, I was different. There was a peace. It was as if demonic spirits, unholy spirits left me. And I would tell you, I felt the difference. It felt like a a dirty muddy uh, person getting a hot sudsy shower. As I confess sin, it was as if it rolled off of me, uh, sloughed off of me, was purged from me. I didn't do anything. It was as if I asked the power of God, the person of God, the most holy God to do what I couldn't do for myself. Help me get this off of me, get this out of me, help me. And the, the comforter, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, helped me. I love Wesley Duell's definition of the Holy Spirit. In his book, A Blaze for God, it's probably a 75-year-old book now, he said this, the Holy Spirit is a holy person, not a holy emotion. Yet as this holy person works within us, he gives us holy power, his divine adequacy to us in such a way that we feel new inner strength new enablement above our own resources, a sense of special authority and faith, and we recognize a new effectiveness, which we must credit entirely to the spirit and not to ourselves. As you read through day eight, day nine, day 10, day 11 in the Burning Heart Contract, or you take the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure at Burning Hearts, Inc., inc.com, you read daily about this constant companion, the Holy Spirit, who is, and that's why this word cannot be overlooked in the 21st century. He's holy. He's not the Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit, the one who sets us apart for God. Yes, very often in a culture that is against God, that is against Christians, that is anti-Christ. J.I. Packer in his book, Knowing God, said this, Christians have an indwelling instructor, the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It means wherever you are, the Holy Spirit will prompt you, will, um, touch you, encourage you, speak to you, love you. But if you push him away, if you don't fan a flame on the Holy Spirit in your life, you will look like and become more like the world than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one in Galatians who in, in 
indwells us and gives us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Every addict knows the first thing I need is self-control. Every parent knows the first thing I need is patience. Every um, citizen knows the first thing I need is love, which is empathy, to put myself in another person's shoes and accept that my life was not like theirs, and they have had struggles that I have not had. So I cannot judge or hate. I must bring them to the throne of the living, loving God. Yes? Well, in the second week of the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure, the call to be uh, set apart in purity, I do teach very simple practices such as spiritual breathing. Breathe in Holy Spirit, breathe out anxiety, breathe out fear, breathe out um, hate, jealousy. Oh my gosh, isn't that the truth? Finally, I reveal what every theologian teaches that you must look for the first time. The word such as holiness is used in the Bible, and then carry it all the way through to understand its deepest meanings. Well, Leviticus 11.45 is where the Lord says, I am the one, I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. You must therefore be holy because I am holy. And that Old Testament passage is what Peter refers to in 1 Peter 1. 15 and 16, when he speaks boldly, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Don't fight this. (laughs) One of my favorite commentaries, Hendrickson's commentaries on the book of Leviticus says this, holiness must be the characteristic of God's people as a community. The 1947 Fellowship of the Burning Heart set a standard for their generation, for their young adults to live in sexual purity and sobriety. I see no reason it should be any different in the 21st century that you would set a standard alongside of your peers and live um, in holiness, sexually pure, a clean mouth. Uh, pure motives, uh, in sobriety, um, not using, uh, but actually encouraging and helping those who are struggling to live in a sober, friendly uh, manner. Second Timothy 2.21, and I close with this, it's always been the focus of week two. It's Paul talking to Timothy, his mentee, and he said, Timothy, If you will just keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use for every good work. I I believe in every century, in every decade, holiness is not an option. Let's take time now to pray and ask God, do something in me, in my sphere of influence that will change the world for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come together and pray that you would call upon us to be holy like you are holy, that we would lead lives that are honorable and true, pure, ready for you to use our master for every good work. Go before and behind us. We need you. We ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you've been encouraged by this message. And I hope you join me every week for the Weekly Lead Podcast. Meanwhile, you can follow me daily on Instagram at Becky Tirabasi and find the link in the bio with everything you need to become a Weekly Leader.